Toxic Shock Syndrome, or TSS. And toxic shock syndrome is caused by Staphylococcus or Streptococcus. And these organisms cause a syndrome that consists of fever, low blood pressure, a rash, and then eventually, if severe enough, can go on to cause organ failure involving kidneys and liver. Now I'm going to break it up into two categories, the staph toxic shock and the strep toxic shock. Now the first one, the staph toxic shock, occurs in women and in particular the risk factor are women who are using tampons. Now just regular use is not really the big problem. The problem is when these tampons are left in place for a long time. What that does is it causes a perfect environment for staph to grow and this eventually causes colonization of the vagina with staph. Then later what happens is the staph can enter the bloodstream this staph toxic shock can also happen in other scenarios such as after childbirth or after certain uh, surgical procedures and also after abortion. And the mortality of staph toxic shock hovers around 3% or so. So now let's look at strep toxic shock. This can happen in men or women and this happens after minor trauma. It can also happen after surgery and certain viral infections can also be risk factors such as varicella. The difference is strep toxic shock is much more um, severe in its fatalities. The mortality is as high as 60 percent. Now let's turn our attention to the symptoms and again I'll break it into two categories, staph toxic shock and strep toxic shock. Now some of the symptoms are common to both, such as fever, high fever, low blood pressure, and a rash that is erythematous. But then certain symptoms are specific to each type of bug. So for example, for staph, the patient will also have nausea and vomiting, diarrhea, myalgia and hepatic damage can also occur and the patient will also present with a low platelet count. In strep toxic shock in about 55 percent of patients you can get something known as acute respiratory distress syndrome. You can also get coagulopathy and Similar to staph, you can also get liver damage. And both of these conditions can cause kidney damage. And unfortunately, if severe enough, can lead to shock and death. In terms of diagnosis, really it's a clinical diagnosis based on symptoms and history, but definitely blood cultures are very important in the diagnostic workup and that is done to isolate the organism. And then throughout the diagnostic process you need to continuously monitor the kidney and liver function because those two organs can definitely be affected by toxic shock. In terms of treatment, this is an ICU admission without a doubt, very serious. Um, you have to go in and remove the source of the infection, of course, and fluids are given to treat the low blood pressure, and antibiotics, of course, are given to treat the infection. And you use some pretty strong antibiotics, such as vancomycin, and uh, another very strong antibiotic known as linazolid. And in the most severe cases of toxic shock, um, treatment with IV immune globulin has shown to help.
26-year-old woman planned to go biking. As she was dressing, she noticed her period had just started, so she inserted a tampon. While biking, a car turned right immediately in front of her. She crashed into it and catapulted over the hood. She was unable to get up, and when she looked at her right leg, she found that her knee had traveled more than halfway up her thigh. The paramedics approximately realigned the femur, splinted it, and transported her to a local hospital, where they set the fracture by implanting a metal rod down the shaft of the bone. Because of her blood loss, she was administered two units of blood, after which her hemoglobin level was seven. After two days in the hospital, the surgical wound continued to seep blood, but she seemed on the road to recovery and was transferred to a neighboring rehab facility. Because of everything else going on, nobody thought of replacing the tampon. The morning after arriving at the rehab facility, she complained of dizziness and feeling of weakness and seemed somewhat disoriented. She had a temperature of 103 Fahrenheit and has a generalized rash that even covers her hands and soles of her feet. Skin is warm to touch, blood pressure is 150 over 90. The duty nurse calls in a physician who arrives 45 minutes later. By the time the physician gets there, the patient's skin appears gray and is cold and clammy. She has tachycardia, heart sounds are weak, and she has a shallow and rapid rate of breathing. Her blood pressure is now 74 over 49. Her eyes are lusterless, and she is staring without showing signs of recognizing anything. At this time, which of the following choices represents the most probable diagnosis? Well, big long clinical vignette, and basically this is a scenario of toxic shock. She had a tampon that was placed in and not removed for days and that gave a perfect environment for the staff to grow and eventually get into the bloodstream and then she has all the classic symptoms including the rash and the low blood pressure and the fever.